Hi, this is my third video on Microsoft Access, and I'm using the same um, database that we created in the last video by importing an Excel file into Access. So I'll put a link to the Excel file at the bottom of the video, and if you need help importing it using the External Data tab in Excel, then watch the previous video. So I've got this data with airport IDs, airport names, cities and states, and I want to do some complex queries on this. So to create a query, we go to the Create tab and Query Design and choose the table we want to include in our query. And I'll include all four of those fields in my results. And if I change my mind and I just want a few of those fields, I just take off this check mark. And let's say I just want the airport name and the airport ID, and I'll just show those two fields in my results. Um, so now let's narrow things down. Instead of returning all of the results, I want to put something in this criteria field, and I could just put something that's a direct match, like AZ is a match for Arizona. And if I run this query, it'll match states that exactly have Arizona. It looks like there's 39 of them, uh, airports that are in Arizona, um, according to this database. I can also use something called wildcards. And a wildcard um, will not match literally what you're typing in, but it's like a pattern matching. So star matches zero or more characters, question mark matches exactly one character. We've got angle brackets where we can, or square brackets where we can put in inside the characters that we want to match, like a range of characters. And we could include an exclamation point in there to say we want things that are not um, those characters in the angle brackets. And the dash just is used for ranges, like zero to nine, A to Z, something like that. So using those wildcards, if I want to find something that starts with an A for my state abbreviation, and then I don't really care what the next character is, then I could just use a star to represent that second character. And notice that it's going to change this criteria to use the word like. So something, a state that's like A, and then we don't care what the next character is. If we run this query, then we see Alabama, Arizona, we've got Alaska, um, any states that begin with an A will be included in our results. Pretty cool. And we can include that criteria for any of the fields in our database. I could do the same thing with the city and say, I want the city to start with A and the state to start with A. And in the case of the state, that star is only holding the place for one letter. But in the place of the city, um, we've got cities that start with A and states that start with A. Notice that it's matching as many characters as it needs to. And if I go back to design view, I could replace that state star with a question mark because that's just matching one character. But if I did that with the city, well, there, then I would be looking for a city that starts with an A and, and then only has one character after it, and there's no results that match that. There was the shortest city name that starts with an A in a state that starts with an A that I saw had four characters um, after, I think it was four characters after the A. So we could do that um, and match this five character city. We've got four question marks to hold the place, each holding the place of one character. Um, let's try another regular expression. So we've tried uh, the question mark, we've tried the A. Let's try the square brackets to specify our range. So let's say I'm looking for a state and the first letter of the state abbreviation is somewhere in between the range of M to T, and then the second letter is T, or sorry, is N. Um, and I'm gonna put in that like, oops, not link, like, and double quotes around the whole thing. So if I run this, it's gonna look not for square brackets in the state abbreviation, but whatever's in the square bracket, it's gonna use that and look for M, N, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. Some, one of those letters will be the first letter in the state abbreviation, and the second letter will be N. So we'll run this, and we see Minnesota, we see Tennessee, and that looks like it for the states that end with an N, but have something in that range for their first character. 
pretty cool. Um, we could also do something, like I noticed some of the airport IDs have numbers in them, not all of them. Um, so well, actually quite a few of them, at, at, they're ordered alphabetically, so the numbers are appearing at the top. A lot of them don't have numbers, but some of them do have numbers. What if I wanted a regular expression to help me find out, well, how many airport IDs, let's say, I'm gonna start with like again, they have zero or more characters, and then they end in a number. Well, I could say they end in zero through nine, and then it would give me only airport IDs that end in a number. Another way to say that in my regular expression would be to use an exclamation point to say not. So there's not an A through Z as the last character. So that's another way of saying there's a number. All right, well, another really cool concept, and then I'll stop the video here, is a parameter query. So if in the criteria section, instead of having like or starting with uh, quotes, you start with square brackets, and inside the square brackets, you type in a question or a prompt to the user, and you allow them to type in something. So I'm going to type in enter state abbreviation, and I'll abbreviate abbreviation. So that is in the criteria section under state. Now when I run this query, whatever I typed in the square brackets here will appear in a prompt, enter state abbreviation. And if I type in AZ for Arizona, then it'll run the query and put Arizona as the criteria. So I see all of the airports in Arizona. That same exact query, if I run it again and put in OH for Ohio, then I get the results of Ohio. So it's, it's a dynamic query that it's at runtime reading in from the user what it should be searching for and returning those results. Pretty cool.